G'day everyone, I thought it was really important to do a walkthrough as to the state of play of my build here on the 6th of December. Now it's a year ago yesterday that I demolded the hull. So there's been a lot of progress. It doesn't feel like I've done as much as I probably should have, but it has been a very peculiar year and I'm sure everyone will attest to that. So we're gonna take a walk through. I'm just gonna film it and basically explain over the top where I'm at with certain sections and hopefully you might find that interesting for a video. Let's go for it. So let's kick off where the deck mould still sits off to the side of the hull. Now when I demoulded the deck, my intention was to remove the deck mould and sit it back on the hull mould, which is over uh, the other side. You can just see it briefly in the distance there, about 100 metres away. Now the idea is that I'm actually going to sell this mould now. I've decided to um, come to the conclusion that I'm not going to build another one. I intend to go sailing and I'd rather spend my time building more sort of intricate composite items. This, this boat build has been quite a considerable part of my life for some time and, uh, and you know the results are showing now. So we're going to take a walk through and you can see just on the end of the boat here I have the sugar scoop mould. Now these uh, sugar scoop steps are around about four and a half to five feet wide. They're quite a considerable step and I do intend to do some hull extensions or some sugar scoop extensions on these, but I've got that set in place more so to stop the rain coming in. I'm still working pretty heavily uh, with the tent open and I've still got to put in a cockpit roof, which I'm currently working on and I'll talk about that a bit later on. As we walk in here, you can see the sugar scoop bulkhead now. Just recently there has been a capsized catamaran where the rudder shaft broke off and flooded the entire boat. It only happened about four days ago here in Jervis Bay, actually not far from here, about 13 miles off our coast. And luckily they were rescued and uh, and the boat was lost sadly and it did actually capsize ultimately because of a broken rudder shaft. I've actually already had the intention, as you can see here, to have totally sealed and watertight bulkheads, although I still will need access into the rudder mechanism, autopilot, etc and uh, anything else I decided to put in the back there. So walking through, we've got a walk through transom. Now this is originally one of the first Granger designs that actually came with a walk through transom. And I believe there was some debate as to whether a walk through transom would be a good idea from the designer and the manufacturer. And uh, happy to say that I've got a walk through transom. It is nice not to have to step up and then step down, but there are other issues with the age of this boat, obviously. This uh, is a 1998 model and it was designed back then, as you can see by the picture of the last production fly, uh, flybridge carrier that was, uh, or flybridge cruiser that was built. Um, the outfitting was quite nice, but there will have to be some modifications to this design as the helm station that you'll see right here is actually in this position here. And I, I intend to incorporate a helm similar to the light wave catamarans and that's gonna require some detailed modifications and I've come up with a bit of a way to do that and I'll show you uh, in later videos how that's going to work out. The big dinette module took some time to actually integrate into the actual bulkhead. Now remembering the deck here is not glued down as yet. I'm actually positioning everything in place and uh, you can see a picture here of the final result that I'm aiming for. The woodwork, we will go for a lot of woodwork. We certainly won't be using the darker uh, woodwork but certainly I've had to make some modifications here to the mast post. The actual insert that you see there is now sitting uh, and abutting that mast post that I've actually got underneath. So lots of work to do here. We're looking over towards the galley here and then the nav station there. Uh, basically that area there, that nav station, will have uh, separate engine monitoring uh, controls and also obviously uh, autopilot controls there so I can still sit within the boat and control the uh, the function of the boat itself. Walking down the into the starboard side here, that's uh, Janet's resin mixing station. Since Janet started working with me uh, just recently, I've set her up a little table there, and then this here is the nav station. So um, I've still got to work out how to get the wiring in behind there. There is a 140 litre freezer here, which will be a compressor driven freezer. And ultimately that will uh, basically hold all the fish that I'm going to spear. That's my plan. I've uh, been spear fishing for quite some time. I haven't done any recently, but uh, certainly that's my plan is to catch and spear fish uh, as we head off. But at the moment it's a good resin station and, uh, and ultimately it'll have a nice sort of double open top um, lid there. Obviously the cold uh, sink so you can have a, an open top freezer in that, that regard. 
We've also got the stern cabin here. Now, some of that sort of composite um, laminate flooring is really my idea to put down that. It's, it's reasonably inexpensive. It'll have to be waterproof. But as you can see here, although the deck is down but it isn't mated yet, I've actually been working heavily on the final parts that are going to form the stern cabin here. So it's a queen size bunk. Um, you can see there uh, that curved section there is uh, is curved plywood. And now the, the most important part here for for young Roscoe is the engine hatch. Now the engine hatch has to have good access on the right hand side as you see there on the inboard side on the chamfer panel there'll be battery and accessory uh, mount there and and then basically the engine room has a huge amount of accessibility there's been some serious reinforcement going on on that part there and that's all coming up in the future videos as well. Now the mo most important part here is that my impeller is around about four feet below the actual uh, deck of this bed. So I intend to have, as I'm demonstrating there, a door that flips up on a piano hinge. It actually lifts, when you lift the main hatch, it will recess back and allow almost walk through ability into that, uh, into that motor. And then you can see that the, when it's closed down, there will be a, a fiddle across the front there holding the mattress in place. Um, the sewer tank there for the starboard side is not yet installed, so I've still got a little bit of work to do down in that side. And then that bulkhead you can see there with that curved uh, foam core will form the outer margins or the perimeter of the cabin, and then that'll all be tabbed and glassed. Now looking forward towards the bow and the master suite, you can see all the wardrobe effectively is complete as you've seen before. But as we walk forward, I'm, I've been trying to get in all of the pieces. I still have to lift this deck up because I still have quite a bit of work to be done. And I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, where the deck and the hull meet, it will be tabbed and filleted heavily. Um, but I'm trying to work out a process as how to lift this and, uh, and get this deck in place where I can glue it and tab it as much as possible, uh, particularly in regions where I can't access it. Walking forward into the main starboard cabin. Now this is the main suite. Uh, essentially the modules are in, the wardrobes are in, the deck is down here as you can see and this will be the way this uh, this cabin presents itself probably with a lighter um, wood finish. Not really sure what I'm going to use yet. You'll notice here my extensive use of composite angle. Now these are glued with Techniglue onto the bulkheads but certainly not to the deck at this stage because I still have an, an element of lifting the deck up to be done. Obviously, it's a boat and there are issues with headroom in every boat. Um, this one here, I'll just show you as I get closer to the, to the bow how this closes in. Now I'm six, two and a half, so I'm almost six, three, and I have ample headroom in all of the uh, all of the hull sides at least it's not as good as I would have liked in the saloon which is the main uh, I guess living space but the actual cockpit is what I consider to be the living space in fact the saloon uh, once I removed that circular section in the rooftop of the saloon I'm going to have another six to eight inches above it with that new cockpit uh, roof that I'm building. So there are ways that I'm actually going to increase the headroom. I did probably lose a couple of centimeters of headroom uh, with the extra foam that I put in, but I'm gaining a lot of rigidity. So you sort of win where you lose and you lose where you win. But if you can see here, I mean, this door will be increased, but I've got nearly seven feet of head, headroom here in this uh, main suite cabin. Pretty bloody happy about that. And if you have a look back here, you know, I've got ample room to move around. In fact, uh, there's tons of space and we won't elaborate too much because you've seen this room before. Now, moving forward into the forward head, uh, whether we put a washing machine in here is another matter of conjecture. Janet and I tend to be uh, having a lot of discussions about what our needs really will be. But you'll notice as I sort of uh, move around that composite angle that I was discussing a moment ago. My idea is that I'm actually putting this absolutely everywhere I can so that I can uh, get a consistent mate with the surface. Now the window cutouts on the lower windows, these are very important port lights. They're actually being already roughed cut in and you'll notice those circles there, that's actually a hole saw. Now that's giving me the perfect radius that I'm after um, and I'm yet to continue 
the cutting of those. And here's the composite angle I was talking about. I've actually glued with Techniglue already. I screw them in place. Um, however, I use packing tape on the ceiling so that it won't stick to it. So I'm still going to be able to lift this deck back up. I need to lift it up 50 centimeters. That's going to give me access into the forward hold so that I can put the composite angle in there. And then I've got a huge 150 millimeter wide um, section with which to be able to apply the epoxy and then I can tab over where I can reach. So not only am I getting a mechanical and a chemical bond, but I'm also going to be tabbing just about every single region uh, of this boat and it will act as a good gap filler for any area that has some minor gaps. So we're going to walk over into the port side now. You notice here the head, obviously it's down. A uh, bit of a rough picture here of the, uh, of the actual layout and you can actually see how this is really going to be forming. And, uh, and again, the window cutouts on the side are providing a hell of a lot of light, even in the tent on a very gloomy day like we've got today, I'm getting incredible light into that uh, port cabin. It's pretty much a, a replica of the, uh, of the starboard cabin. Now I'm just gonna lay down on the stern cabin in the port side. That is a, essentially it's a queen size bed, but it's a bit short on one side as it actually curves in with the shape of the boat. Now I was going to originally put in a rectangular mattress and feed it underneath that curve section at the back there, but um, I could only see a few problems with that being moisture and certainly uh, and being able to make the bed and then tuck the thing underneath would drive you insane. And if you're in the bed on that side and you wanted to kick the covers off, which I often do because they get pretty hot, particularly in a boat, you tend to sleep with just sheets on if it's a warm night, um, you'd have a lot of difficulty actually trying to get some freedom. So whoever's jammed on that side, and, uh, and that's my side of the bed if I was sleeping in the guest cabin, uh, yeah, I wouldn't love that too much. But I'm just going to lay down here before, and once again, six, two and a half, um, I've got full, full length bed here. Uh, my feet will be about here because the mattress will be a bit higher. So I've got ample space in this bed. In fact, uh, you know, really quite a copious bedroom for a stern cabin. Typically these uh, stern cabins on a boat of this age are quite small. This has over a meter of, of wall space to actually get uh, ready to get changed and, and obviously with the wardrobes being sort of uh, angled away from here we've got a really really good space in this back room. Just show you a picture of what this room's going to look like uh, exactly when I finish it. Probably not so much the woodwork. Now moving forward uh, obviously we've elaborated on this head module so many times. I've got a lot of work to be done uh, around there, reinforcing in between around the door trim. But as I walk up over the stairs, that's the electronics center there. That's uh, access to the uh, AC DC panel and the inverter and the charger in behind that module. And then obviously we've got, uh, essentially we have wardrobes on the side, on the hull side. So that's actually the hull side we're looking at there. And then into the forward uh, port cabin which is actually serves as two single beds or a queen and then the forward um, uh, robe, which is quite a copious robe. And in fact, I increased the, the usability of that by dropping the step on the floor, the actual sole of the, uh, of, the, of the cabin there actually drops down about a foot. So I can actually stand up inside that robe. Now, not that that's going to be necessary, but uh, as you can see, there's gonna be a lot of integration between the hull and the deck and this composite angle will only serve as the initial glue down uh, so that I can get this mated and then I'm going to tab uh, with uh, probably three layers of 600 double bias and vinyl ester obviously the tabbing and the filleting which is going to go on now with that composite angle there is a uh, about a two millimeter edge I will actually feather that edge so that I get a nice smooth transition now you'll notice on the right hand side there there's actually uh, a light coming in. There's two sources of light on the outside hull side. I'll just try to show you that again. Um, it's very, very blatant that uh, there is a, a slit uh, that where the hull and the deck are separated, but there's also another slit. And uh, I'm gonna walk outside in a moment and actually explain that. You'll notice a little bit of chipping there on those modules where I've smashed them with, uh, with blocks of wood when we were demolding. And then looking back across towards the galley, there's going to be a a couple of photos here of the actual galley 
and uh, and ultimately the large circular region on the on the cabin roof of the saloon there is going to be cut out and that will allow for the integration of the cockpit roof which I'm currently uh, designing and building. It's going to be a fairly simple cockpit roof. Now we're going to have a walk outside here. Now you'll notice that I'm actually humping over the top of a large step. I have to integrate a step into the back of that and then we're going to take a walk down the side here. Once again, I still have no safety rails here, so I'm the only person allowed up here. Janet sort of crawls up there, but we're walking on the side. Now on the right here, you will notice that slit with that blue masking tape. Very important that uh, I explain myself here, and that's all going to be coming up in a, in a video very soon. Uh, in my efforts to get the hull and the deck to match perfectly, uh, I, I believe, and I went and actually checked it with the the hull mold that there was some bogging required from the outside to actually make this hull fair, hull and deck fair in the join. I've chosen to slit it 20 feet back and then expand it out, repair it from underneath and then do the fairing on the top which is going to maintain my shape. The mast post insert has already been installed and, uh, and essentially it's just going to need a lot of tidying up. You'll notice that the anti-slip is actually quite filthy. We've got a, a place behind us that is just stirring up road-based dust and it's just driving me mental but there's nothing I can do. There's no point in cleaning up. Our cockpit is pretty copious. It's a huge space. It's, uh, it's really quite a pleasant space to be. And uh, you can see a slight join there in the hull, in the deck where the... Uh, where the, uh, where the deck was actually joined and the mould was joined. And you see there are little window inserts there. I haven't cut this one out yet because that's actually in the head and there is an internal lining module I have to make that is going to fit up over that. All in all, uh, I'm extremely pleased with the way this has come out. There's very few gel coat for floors, but there will be quite a considerable amount of cleanup to be done. Uh, and then looking back out over the sugar scoop here, I've got some pretty exciting news about... Uh, how I'm going to go forward with this. These steps are huge. They're probably the widest ones of, of any cat I've seen of this size of around 12, 11.9 uh, metres. The actual hull is at the moment. I'm extending it out to 12.7. So I'm just going to take you into my workshop here where I'm actually preparing the cockpit roof. Now it is a flybridge mould and the problem with that is it has a lot of extra lounges and a barbecue area and sinks and all these other things that typical flybridge cruisers would have. I simply want a nice flat roof. So I'm going to show you how I've um, modified this mould or I'm actually in the process of modifying it to get my nice clean flat roof so I can put solar panels on it and rain gutters and, uh, and, and essentially run all of the lines that are going to come back from my either my traveller or my German sheeting setup that I'm going to have for my main sheet. So there's a lot going on inside here. I'll just take you in here and have a look. So walking into my factory here, this mould is a two-piece mould. I've actually uh, put it together, uh, basically bolted it back together just to form the roof of my uh, cockpit. Now, this see the ladder across the top here. What I intend to do is to be able to reach it because I don't want to be trafficking across this uh, melamine sheets that I've got here. These are essentially 2.7 metre long sheets that I've, I've biscuit joined together and I've done a test of the actual surface it's going to reveal, which is uh, absolutely spot on. I intend to add any slip and rain gutters and solar panels and, uh, and essentially, you know, regions for reinforcement for deck line organizers etc so there's no point in trying to remodel the whole thing and uh, and this scotia this timber scotia i've got here may or may not form the radius between the sheet of uh, melamine and the mold itself restoration of the mold is going to be relatively simple and that's all coming up in future videos guys so i really hope you enjoyed this this has been a, a real pleasure to put this together it's actually given me some inspiration because i can really see the whole boat in its entirety and, uh, you know, thank you so much for supporting my videos, guys. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time on Life on the Hulls.